Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the February 2022 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around and get a few tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. In yesterday's video, I debuted the newest sheet load of cards, February 2022 showed you the first set I made and told you how to download the printable for free. If you haven't yet seen that video, I will have it linked in the description box below and as an end card at the end of this video. Today I'm here to show you how I made that set of cards. Also don't forget that all of my collaborators will be sharing their takes on this month's sketch and starting with last month, instead of having a link list that you'll follow or hop through, you are going to use the hashtag in the title to see all of the collaboration team videos. Now on my channel, I do have a link to all of my collaborators if you want to do it that way, but it's super easy. You can just click on that hashtag and because it is specific to team members, it will pull up the cards that the team has created. We do have team members here on YouTube and over on Instagram, and I know that they would love for you to stop by, see what they've created, and leave them some love. Speaking of leaving some love, I want to give a big thank you and shout out to my channel members. Thank you so much for your continued support each month. It helps keep Sheetload free for all subscribers and helps keep me creating here on YouTube. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in my description box below. I did show you in yesterday's video the supplies that I'll be using today. Now as I add any other products or tools throughout the process, I will be sure to let you know. But if I ever leave you with any questions, you can leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! When I chose the three papers from my 6x6 pad, I chose the stripes which had lots of colors and then two more kind of plain tone on tone pieces that went with that. All three of these pieces will be cut per the instructions on the cutting guide and like I had mentioned previously, if your pattern paper does not have a direction, you can actually get a seventh piece from the bottom. Now if your paper does have a direction, you'll want to make sure you know that before you make the first cut and we are going to slice four and a half inches off the top. Now my piece on the bottom I will just hang on to for a later card. Now once I have that four and a half inch tall strip, I'm going to use the one inch mark to the left of my cut line and just keep pushing my paper from right to left and cutting one inch. Now because we do need six pieces and this piece of paper is six inches wide, you will not want to do what I call a generous cut. Make sure to cut it just right at one inch or maybe slightly under. This way you can get all six pieces. Now for the final cut you'll notice here that the piece was too skinny for me to hold on to with my hand so I brought in a piece of scotch removable tape to hold that in place while I made the cut this tape can be reused and it pulls off cleanly from the pattern paper I cut the remaining two pieces in the same exact way and on this striped paper since I wanted the lines to go horizontally I did make sure to make the first cut correctly. Here's a look at the finished cut pieces. 
Next up, I will be cutting some white cardstock for CS1. Now this originally calls for two pieces, and the second piece you actually only cut two of the four because you need six total. But for my cards, since they're clear, I do want a piece of white cardstock for the inside as well. So I got out three pieces of cardstock, and I will cut four pieces from each. I slice each of them at four and three quarters inches tall, and then I rotate those pieces and cut them to three and a half inches wide. Now make sure to hang on to this extra white cardstock on the sides. You can definitely use this for your sentiment pieces instead of using a separate piece especially if you're using like white or off-white. Now for me though, I will be using vellum, which I'll cut here in a little bit. So I just put those in my white scrap box for later. I kept cutting until I had 12 total pieces. Normally I don't show how to cut card bases, but I thought since today's were special, I would. I just wanna show you that this quote unquote clear cardstock can be cut with regular trimmers. This gets cut in half just like your cardstock card base at four and a quarter inches wide. Then for me to help me hold this in place while I fold it, I line up one end with that straight ledge at the bottom of my trimmer. And then I just fold it over and then I fold it in half making a nice crease. Now I did bring in my bone folder here, but you can definitely use your fingernails or your fingers just to make that nice and crisp. If your trimmer does not have a ledge like mine, you can definitely just fold these, you know, mid-air like you might any other piece of cardstock, but just because it is a little bit slicker, make sure to hold on tightly. This might be the point where you pull out a piece of cardstock for your CS2 items, but these are actually great pieces because they're so small to use up scraps you might have. Now for my cards today, I will actually be stamping my sentiment on vellum. So what I'm gonna do is cut three strips from the top of my piece of vellum that are three quarters inches tall. And then instead of cutting them to three and a half inches wide, I'm actually just gonna cut the strips in half at four and a quarter. This way you'll see later I have some extra room at the end to fold the vellum around so I can adhere it to the card without the adhesive showing through the front. After all of the cutting was done, I moved on to stamping my focal points. I think this set was perfect for today since there were six little images and I'll be making six cards. I will be coloring with some alcohol ink markers, so I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black ink on a piece of Nina Solar White cardstock. I did take some time setting up all six stamps so they would fit on this piece of cardstock and I would also be able to use the dies later. This was probably the most time consuming part of the stamping. But once I did get those all in place, I inked up my images and I did stamp them twice just because they're new stamps and I wanted to get a nice solid black. My plan originally was to color my images and then re-stamp the black ink so they would have nice solid borders, but I ended up forgetting to do that. So you'll see that when I move on to stamping the sentiments, I still have my previous stamps on there as well as a piece of just random typing paper at the top. So you can just ignore that for now. I will be stamping the happy birthday to the right side of each vellum piece, and that's because on the original sketch you'll see that the sentiment was to the right so we have room on the left for the image. I got the sentiment set up so I would also have room to the right to wrap the vellum around the cardstock later and then after I made sure it was straight with the grid on my misty I got that inked up and stamped with stays on jet black. Since vellum is not porous, you do need an ink like this to be able to stamp onto it. I love the Misty because I can set this sentiment up once and then quickly stamp it six times onto each piece of vellum for my cards. I used the striped piece of pattern paper and my Spectrum Noir color chart to pick out four markers for today's cards. I will list them each individually in the description box below. 
If you have been following me for long, you know that coloring detailed images is not really my thing, but recently I have discovered that I like to do what I call selective coloring. I will pick one or two colors and just color in parts of the image. So on this boy, I'm going to color in both of the balloons, this first one I'm showing you in blue, and then I will color the other one in green. Now on the balloons, I did do some shading with my markers, but I want to show you that because these images are so little, you can also just use single colors. So over here on this girl's hat, I picked, I believe it was the darkest part from the pink marker, and I just colored in each stripe solidly. You can choose which you want to do based upon how much you like to color or how much time you have. I continued coloring parts of each image with those four markers, and here is a close-up look at the finished pieces. I brought in the coordinating dies as well as my scotch removable tape and I set each die up around the images. Now I like to use this tape because it is reusable and it always comes off cleanly. Once all of the dies were taped in place, I ran it through my die cutter and here is a look at those cute little images. Now that all of the pieces are ready, we can start assembling the cards. When I mat the pattern paper strips onto the cardstock, I adhere the outer two pieces first. This way I can pay attention and try to get even borders on the outside, and then when I go to place the center strip, it's as easy as centering it left to right between the first two and making sure it's the same height as well. For the next card, I kept the green strip on the left, but then I switched up where the stripes and red paper are. The way that these pattern papers get cut, you can make all six cards look exactly the same, or you will actually be able to switch them up so each one is a little bit different. What I did, I just paid attention to which pattern paper was on the left, and then I made two keeping that on the left and switching up the two on the right. So you'll see here, I pulled out three pieces. The left two are the red pieces, and then I switched up the stripes and the green. I continued adding the pattern papers until all six card fronts were ready. Now it's time to get the sentiments added. To get an idea of how each one should go, for this first card I laid my vellum on the bottom and then brought in one of my stamped focal points. Once I thought everything was set up and in a good place, I flipped the card over and I added some adhesive to the back of each piece where the vellum was. This way I could just wrap the vellum around both sides and it was adhered in place and you could not see the adhesive through the front. Once again, I kept adhering these pieces until all six were done. Next, it was time to add these pieces to the card bases. I do find for my eyesight, it helps when I put a scrap of white cardstock or typing paper on the inside of the clear card base. That way, once I have adhesive on the back of the card front, I can better see the edges of that clear card base. Now, one thing I get asked a lot is how I hide the adhesive on the backs of my cards. Honestly, I don't let that bother me. I leave it as is, but the, if that is something that you don't like, you could always add just another piece of white cardstock to the back of the front. But I have to say, if people are going to look at the back of that and judge me, maybe they won't get a handmade card. But again, if that bothers you, you could always just put that extra layer on the back side. Once all of the card fronts were finished, it was time to get my piece of white cardstock put on the inside for the personal message. To do this, I add adhesive to one side of the cardstock, and then I open up my card base, and with the adhesive side up, 
I line it up as best as I can behind the cardstock on the front of the card. Once that's in place, I press down the back side of the card and now it should be hidden from the front when you turn it over. And once again, if you want to put another piece of cardstock on the back of that to hide the adhesive, you can do that. I continued putting those insides in there until all six cards were ready for some embellishments on the front. I took some time to pair up each of my focal points with a card base that I thought it looked good on. And then because I do want to add a little bit of dimension to these cards, I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the 3 8 inch width and I put a strip on the back of each of the little birthday kids. Then after I pulled the release paper, I lined that up kind of centered on the vellum area on the left, trying to line up the feet with the bottom of the word happy. I finished adding those to each card front, and then I needed a little bit of bling. I brought in some kind of white holographic sequins from my stash that already had adhesive on the back, and I added three in kind of a triangle shape to the front of each card. I like the little bit of extra sparkle these add to the cards and the way that they kind of take on the color of the pattern paper or cardstock around them. I finished all six cards and here's a close up look at those. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made my first set of cards using this month's printable. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Don't forget the debut video where I tell you how you can download this month's printable is in the description box below. And make sure to click on that hashtag in the title so you can see what the rest of the collaboration team has created. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.